good afternoon everybody uh, a very warm welcome to all of you i am shubhendu part consulting editor of voice and data and your host for today's webinar as part of its tlf dialogue voice and data is organizing a three series webinar to celebrate the 25 years of mobile telephony in india while the special collectors edition of the magazine that was released on 15th august captured the 25 years journey in today's webinar the first of the interactive series uh, that we have we will be focusing on the future we intend to deliberate on how the telecom sector particularly the emerging new 5g technology will drive social and economic transformation in the country as we are aware the telecommunication and mobile internet have played an important role in enabling india to continue working during the current pandemic experts also point out that the remote working environment which got a major push during the crisis is the new normal and it has started to change how businesses are done and the society operates the webinar is hosted by voice and data india's oldest telecom magazine from the cyber media group but before we kick off the session i would like to put in some housekeeping essentials uh, this is particularly for the participants for the duration of the presentation all lines will be on the listen only mode however you may send your questions through the chat and we will take it up depending upon the available time the feedback from participants is also very important for us so please don't forget to submit your feedback at the end of the webinar now to to kick off this webinar i would like to welcome our chief guest for the day dr arish sharma chairman tri namaskar sir namaskar a 1970 a 1978 batch ias officer with a masters degree in mathematics from iit kanpur and another in computer science from the university of california dr sharma brings an amazing mix of technology and bureaucracy that allowed him to make differences at every stage of his civil services assignments from being a district collector in jharkhand uh, different districts or as a director general of ui dai or as the chief secretary of his home cadre state jharkhand and now as the chairman of the tri he has played a pivotal role in driving the telecom industry he is also the recipient of the voice and data telecom person of the year for 2019 a very warm welcome to you sir we also have with us mr akhil gupta who is the vice chairman bharti enterprises and executive chairman bharti infratel mr gupta has played a pivotal role in bharti's phenomenal growth right since inception he has led the formation of various partnership for bharti with leading international operators like bt telecom italia singapore telecom and vodafone He has also been instrumental in induction of leading financial investors and other PE funds in the company. I also take the opportunity to welcome Professor Abhay Karandikar, Director IIT Kanpur. Professor Karandikar is also a member of TRI and has spearheaded national efforts in setting up Telecom Standards Development Society of India, which is the country's standards body for telecom. He was the founding member and former chairman of the society. Before joining IIT Kanpur, Professor Karandikar served as the institute chair professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering at IIT Bombay. He also served as the dean, faculty affairs, and was the head of the electrical engineering department at the institute. I also welcome Dr. Anand Agrawal. who is the group ceo of sterlite technologies stl dr agrawal is an alumnus of iit kanpur and university of california berkeley where he completed his phd in materials engineering from rennesellar polytechnic institute usa before joining stl in 1995 he has navigated stl from an optical connectivity company to becoming a global leader in end to end data network solutions he is a recipient of voice and data pathbreakers of the year award for 2019 we also have among us mr kamal nath ceo of sifi technologies as a ceo he has successfully led sifi's transformation 
from being an enterprise network and data center service provider to a converged ICT solutions and services organization. Prior to joining SIFI, Mr. Nath had a 17 year tenure at HCL Technologies, including as the country sales and business head, where he led various transformational engagements with large enterprises. He incubated new business services, created innovative business models, and developed new and high growth vertical customer segments. And last but not the least, I welcome Cyber India Group Chairman, Mr. Pradeep Gupta, who will be moderating today's interaction. Mr. Gupta, or PG, as he is known, is a first generation entrepreneur who set up Cyber Media in 1982. He's an industry veteran with over 40 years experience and is highly reputed in the IT industry. He has mentored over 150 startups and is the co-founder of Indian Angel Network. Mr. Pradeep Gupta is also the chair of the Alumni Trust, the sponsors of Ivy, Leap, Ivy Cap Ventures Trust Funds. He's also on the board of the IM Calcutta Innovation Park. I would like to now hand over the session to Mr. Gupta and request him to take the discussion forward. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Shubendu. Uh, and uh, uh, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Sharma. Uh, sir, uh, it's really an honor to have you as the chief guest for today's interaction. Uh, I would also like to welcome the other panelists and look forward to a very engaging uh, discussion. So, without uh, further ado, uh, may I request you to to please give uh, give us your inaugural uh, address, Dr. Sharma. Over to you. Uh, good afternoon, friends, and uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Gupta and Shubendu, uh, Dr. Anand Agrawal, Mr. Kamal Nath, Professor Abhay Karandikar, uh, Mr. Akhil Gupta, and uh, various uh, participants of the uh, webinar. I think this is uh, voice and data has been very active in this technology space and, and uh, you know it's not nothing new I mean I've been familiar with uh, with this organization voice and data which last so many years and and Mr. Pradeep Gupta and Shubendu both have been you know taking this this process uh, forward and uh, uh, I also am very happy because uh, I will realize that uh, you know, we need to have uh, uh, we need to have lobby groups. Certainly, I mean, there is a need to have industry bodies, etc. But there is also a, a need to have a certain thick uh, tags, think you know, thinking bodies, which actually work in an unbiased uh, manner and not as a lobby group, but as as someone who thinks in a strategic manner and and actually points out as to in which direction the the technology should move in which direction things must happen. So I think I'm really very happy to participate in this. Uh, uh, and I want to compliment the entire team at Voice and Data to organize such uh, this, this webinar. Obviously, uh, it is uh, these are difficult times uh, for our country. And, and we were discussing just a little while ago how uh, how you know, numbers are increasing and how things are happening and this is not only difficult for our own country it is for the entire world the entire world actually is is affected by the pandemic and in this pandemic we have learned new ways of doing things you know things which are which could be done in a contactless manner in a remote manner in a virtual manner and that that's what we are we are doing uh, we also have realized that you know these could be better ways of doing things rather than you know getting into traffic jams and you know collecting at one place of course you don't have that bone homie which is there when you are together at the place maybe having a, a a lunch or a dinner or you know talking and laughing and other things so maybe that part is uh, missing but nevertheless uh, for the purpose of interacting with each other i think this is a wonderful medium and uh, many of these uh, good habits which we have developed uh, in this period probably we will, we will take it forward. It is also a time where we have realized the importance of connectivity of telecommunication infrastructure, because if these times were there 20 years back and we were locked out, 
I don't think anybody would have come out of that lockdown. Even a one week lockdown would have caused huge, huge psychological you know, damage to a large number of population because because today we are sane only because we are we have a feeling that we are able to connect with our loved ones through you know voice or through video calls and stuff like that. So therefore, while we are physically constrained, we are certainly mentally very active, agile, and are able to communicate. And therefore, we are able to maintain our our sense, senses and sensibilities. So this is also very important. One thing which has also come out of this is the importance of telecommunication infrastructure in other sectors. For example, work from home I just mentioned. Then you know you have now today the the children are studying on this uh, you know in a, in a virtual mode virtually uh, and, and and this education is happening the telemedicine is happening people are getting uh, because they can't move physically to hospitals and people are in fact afraid to visit hospitals because they think that it might create more infections and therefore they are the ones who are getting medications medicine deliveries are taking place online in some sense so i think and 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 uh, as you are aware the prime minister announced on 15th of august the national digital health mission the basic attributes of which are essentially to provide health services in a digital way which which means having the digital health records which means having tele consultations which means having delivery of medicines so or, or online so all these things will create a robust uh, infrastructure in the in the uh, health sector similarly we also have fortunately we have uh, uh, created uh, and we were lucky uh, as a country to have created a digital identity infrastructure which actually can prove your identity in a remote manner and and anywhere anytime kind of paradigm where uh, you can get the services delivered and today by that uh, identity a direct benefit transfer is taking place uh, to billions of people in fact millions of people it is taking place but the credit transactions are billions uh, the pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana is transmitting 500 rupees a small amount of 500 rupees to millions of people 300 million people in fact similarly the lpg subsidy is going for 50 rupees subsidy or 100 rupees subsidy is going to 140 million accounts every month so we have devised because of the digital identity infrastructure we are now able to you know sort of connect with the recipient connect each each individual is now a recipient through his bank account or our bank account where we can just put in money and there is nothing in between you know people used to say that when money starts from delhi at one rupee only 15 paisa reaches to the final recipient today that one rupee reaches as one rupee in his account and and the money is the most fungible you know, kind of resource which you can give it to somebody and he can use it the way he wants to use it so therefore because of this digital identity infrastructure we have been able to create such a massive digital you know kind of network of of uh, people bank accounts where we are able to use we are able to use what is called jam to transfer money to these people you know interestingly uh, today uh, uh, this month is also the 10th anniversary of the first aadhar being issued you know we issued first aadhar on 29th of september 2010 in the small village of Tembli in Maharashtra uh, of Nandurbar district of Maharashtra to Ranjana Sonawane. So, so this is also um, for a, for me uh, as I was DG and mission director of that program pro project. It was a moment of very you know it was a moment of happiness uh, for me to witness that that uh, that moment. And therefore, thereafter, a lot of things have happened. Uh, the government uh, of the day had adopted Aadhaar. And thereafter, uh, many things are riding on it. You have, you know, even telecom space, electronic KYC is being used to provide saves to the people. PDS ration is being distributed to the people using Aadhaar authentication. More than a billion authentications are taking place. So that's another area. Other area where we have done tremendous work is the digital payment space. Now, digital payment, you know, 1.45 
billion transactions took place last month. Uh, you know, UPI transactions. Now these are again contactless, you know, transactions uh, where you don't go to the place and get the money, but you are, you know, so so these are transactions which are which are quite consistent in these difficult times in the sense that these transactions are actually sustaining a lot of that heavy lifting is being done by these these applications so you have health you have payments you have identity you have uh, you know dbt you have distribution systems so these are large number of uh, you know things which are which are riding uh, on on technology and and which are actually benefiting the people of this country and i have always believed that you know we can solve india's hard problem using technology most of them we can solve of course some of them cannot be solved by that also but so this is this is the the scenario so therefore again emphasizing the fact that the information and communication technologies have become extremely important and if you develop platforms and applications on top of these technologies then you can actually continue doing what you want to do uh, and and achieve the so called paperless presenceless and cashless uh, governments in this country it is it is possible to do and and other in fact uh, yesterday i was reading a, an article in economist which was talking about identity uh, something like proof identity proof or some i don't know the tap, uh, the heading of it but actually one of the paragraphs in this was that it is ironical that britain and the usa do not have any system of digital identity it was talking of digital identity but a massive country like india has the digital identity where they are they are able to able to deliver uh, you know benefits to billions millions of people so it we are really so proud of it and, and and we have done this now what is important is with all these things to continue and telecom becoming so important and so central platform for india's digital delivery system as well as well as for the growth trajectory it is important that we invest in the future technologies it is important that we invest in in, in things which you know are going to uh, sustain things which are you know which are going to take this process forward and i have always believed that if we can deploy technologies which are robust cheap which can solve india's problems and which are more appropriate to india i think we should we should not hesitate in in doing that so my view is people have different views on on 5g for example and which is the topic which you have kept for today people have different views for 5g one of the views is that there are no use cases for 5g in india to hum log karenge kya uska uska to zarurat hai usko develop karne ki this is the typical uh, you know sort of uh, refrain people have mujhe lagta hai ki this particular thinking is quite flawed because it is not the use cases are there use cases will be there and india always springs out some use cases which are which are never there nowhere there in the world so so technology have had you know use cases in hindustan mein aisi aisi cheeze hain jahan hum log technology ko istemal karte hain they become very very relevant to us and it's also true that once you give technology to people people are extremely good at adopting that technology mr ravi shankar prasad always makes that point that you know it is not that you have to teach technology to indians indians actually figure out as to how to use technology you know you 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 gave them the telephony and they were they were high rates of that so indians figured out how to use it so they started the missed call uh, stuff so they made a missed call without paying anything to you guys and and, and then you know they, they were able to make a call or communicate whatever they had to communicate so i think that is that is there my view is that uh, the the 5g uh, is actually uh, not only relevant for our country 5g is also going to propel us propel india into a, a new sort side of new ways of of doing many things so and and as as all of you who are experts on this issue professor karandikar is an expert on the spectrum and other uh, standards for example Uh, and and akhil gupta ji of course is is there in thick of things anand agrawal ji is there in the other uh, sort of areas of creating infrastructure in the sense of fiber and all that so i think all of you know more than me that 5g as a technology is really a quantum jump uh, in in terms of its 
capabilities than what it is what 4G is. It is not really a built on you know incremental build on uh, 2G to 3G and 3G to 4D 4G. It is actually a quantum jump, quantum jump in terms of you know uh, the the data speed hundreds of times uh, data speeds terabytes and other things then it is also extremely you know it has the quality of having a very low latency uh, so 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 therefore many real time applications can ride on top of 5g uh, it has a high throughput therefore high data speeds machine to machine communication that i think is also also possible so high throughput machine to and massive machine to machine communication these are two three you know attributes of 5g which actually make it extremely suitable for for multiple uh, you know experiences or, or 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 things so it provides seamless coverage high data rate low latency high reliable communications it will increase energy efficiency spectrum efficiency network efficiency as well as efficiency of other systems in addition to 5g providing significant network performance characteristics improvement over the previous generations it is expected to also add various service dimensions beyond the traditional voice and data through enabling technologies like internet of things artificial intelligence robotic process automation augmented reality virtual reality and giving rise to use cases across industry verticals and the mobile industry has demonstrated its ability to connect to and transform society using its 2g 3g and 4g networks over the last 25 years 5g will build on these successes by delivering a platform that enhances existing services and enables new business models and use cases so i think this is this is very important now 5g use cases there are many and i'm sure uh, other speakers will will uh, dwell upon these issues now the basic goals of 5g one is a boundless connectivity for all so so that is one part innovation and network economics the mobile industry will strive to cost effective to deliver better quality networks either independently or through sharing and partnership 5g era networks will rely on a combination of established and innovative technologies and use both licensed and unlicensed bands, you know, e band and e band. Then, of course, it will revolutionize the mobile broadband experience, to drive growth in new use cases for massive and critical Internet of Things, <coughs> and it will accelerate the digital trans transformation of industry verticals. It will have certainly provided uh, provide a better user experience. Now, uh, obviously, there are um, other requirements. Uh, 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 for 5G. Now, the uses of 5G, the immediately use, use which we can think of is, is actually improving the mobile broadband access. So, thus far, we have been, you know, doing this, uh, uh, laying the fibers, of course, connecting the, uh, the, there's a lot of work to be done on the connecting the towers and, and you know, fully utilizing the, the, you know, 4G experience because there happens many times a bottleneck at the backhaul level, which I think we should we should resolve some of these issues. But uh, a couple of uh, you know uh, things which are necessary is that in addition to making our smartphones better, 5G mobile technology can usher a new immersive experience such as VR and AR with faster, more uniform data rates, lower latency, and lower cost per bit. Overall, it will improve the user experience. Then, of course, it will be useful for mission critical applications, communications. So, so this is intended for application where the data is delay intolerant and communications is intended for applications where uh, the critical nature of the data requires guaranteed and accurate transmission to the destination. It will have massive uh, IoT. And, of course, intelligent connectivity. This is also very, very important because the networks themselves will be able to self-configure it and, and, and provide intelligent connectivity. Now, obviously, in our case, fixed wireless access will be another very important area of, of uh, enhancing the connectivity experience in the rural areas. So this is also very uh, important. It will be useful for consumers. It will be useful business. In fact, 
our latest recommendations relating to you know the auction of a spectrum we have said that certain uh, you know 25 megahertz is what we have identified should be actually earmarked like germany has done it for uh, 5g applications uh, uh, for industry industry 4.0 so therefore what can be done in a limited geographical area of the industry uh, premises we can give the give the license uh, for that particular area to the industry which can use and leverage the power of 5g in their premises to automate the the uh, you know, cases and and other areas where it can be used is smart agricultural uh, agriculture manufacturing i just spoke about smart care telehealth smart energy and utilities smart cities smart education so we are going to have multiple use cases of 5g which are more appropriate to our country this we must have then of course is we have to have a strategic deployment of 5g network then of course uh, we need to have collaborate uh, the 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 environment enabling environment of for 5g so the use of 5g technology in vertical sectors carry a number of implications for a supportive public policy environment some of these are general and some are vertical specific in terms of cross sectoral regulation the convergence of 5g in vertical sectors will challenge existing regulatory framework so realize the full potential of 5g a more supportive policy environment is the key this would empower mobile operators to work with other sectors on more innovative services a flexible forward looking and technology neutral framework is needed further there is a need for sharing of the infrastructure among service providers there could be a saving of you know as much as 45% depending upon the level of sharing among the operators so so government has of course uh, we have been cognizant of the fact that we need to bring in this technology and people need to uh, invest in it so as for uh, you know starters the trai had uh, recommended the auction of the uh, the so called of course we are not uh, we are neutral in terms of technology but but as is the practice people we know that you know 3 3 gigahertz and up to 3.3 3.6 gigahertz is going to be used for 5g we have recommended the reserve prices and recommended for auction of these spectrum to the government and the government will take a call soon then uh, test bed uh, they have government has launched a program tit uh, titled building an end to end 5g test bed to advance innovation and research in 5g this three year program began in march 2018 with a budget of uh, 2.22 crores the program emphasizes close collaboration between the universities and small technology companies the goal of the program is to build proof of concept of 5g prototypes that are broadly compliant with the 3gpp standards several academic r&d programs around 5g themes have been found funded by the department of science and technology then of course national digital communication policy very explicitly uh, talks about enabling high speed internet internet of things and machine to machine by roll out of 5g technologies implementing an excel plan for roll out of 5g applications services so the the policy framework actually is 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 in place to to ensure that 5g comes then of course is spectrum for 5g guidelines of 5g tri trials uh, the dot has already issued uh, so so i think we have uh, uh, all the things in place what extra things are required is one is increasing fiberization as i said there are only 30% of the towers which are connected to fiber we need to increase that we need to solve the row issues which have been you know guidelines have been issued but i think the guidelines have to pull it down to the state level and states have to understand the importance of of these guidelines then of course opening up of e band for meeting immediate backhaul requirements then promote infrastructure sharing both active as well as passive we have uh, you know provided uh, for ip1 we have provided a lot of uh, you know flexibility to say that they can even uh, you know install establish the active infrastructure we have we have said that we are not going to enumerate the element as to which is active which is passive but we are going to just say whether this infrastructure is providing service or not so you can't provide service but you can establish everything which you have to uh, have to do so i think we have uh, all the pieces in place and if there is anything else which is required uh, for for uh, facilitation of 5g 
the government, I'm sure, is ready to work with these stakeholders. Uh, will, will, will people talk about, you know, that uh, who will make investments in 5G? I think in making investment is a business decision, but I think uh, there is no reason with the these use cases. There is no reason of the huge demand. There is no reason for a very heavy, very large market India that India is. There is no reason why people will not invest money. In fact, we have seen in recent times there have been investments in the in the telecom space, and uh, we keep on hearing in the newspaper that many other players are interested in making investment. Investment obviously will happen when gap bundling happens. There is a regulatory certainty, and there is a you know deliberate push from the government side to to make things happen. So I think I as a, as an individual uh, see uh, this development, uh, see that the from a technology angle we need to bring in 5G number one, and number two we need to take all policy decisions and all in. And we have to facilitate implementation of deployment of 5G. Obviously, we have to, you know, create policies which become, uh, which become kind of attractive enough for people to invest, uh, uh, invest the, in, the, in the in the system. And I think that that is already happening and is in place. So I see a great future uh, of of this technology in India. I see also a great future of the overall information and communication technologies because we have been able to build a huge amount of uh, you know software and services on top of that what we call it the stand we, we have a number of things and i'm sure these things are going to play out much much more aggressively in the in the next era of 5g uh, we will continue to build in fact i had uh, couple of weeks back written an article in the Indian Express where I said that from a platform we should go to protocol approach similar to what we had done on the internet internet after all is working on the basis of protocols only and it's an open architecture stuff that open architecture we need to adopt even in many of these verticals like e-commerce like other things and that will be an inclusive kind of protocol based platform which will come up and once that happens, India would have created another landmark and another paradigm shift into the into these these applications. So, so we are uh, we are very sure about the uh, applications on top of uh, networks, uh, the 5G networks which will come. And and I am uh, for one who is very uh, hopeful that we will be able to establish uh, a, a great ecosystem. And of course, now there is a huge talk of the domestic manufacturing of, of equipments because, because it is the considered as strategically very important and that also uh, will happen. It has happened already in the mobile handset space. Now it will start happening in other things also. I'm very, very sure the electronics manufacturing in general and telecom equipment manufacturing in particular will, will actually receive a huge boost. So with that, I'll conclude here. Thank you very much again uh, for inviting me, uh, Mr. Gupta and Mr. Subhendu Parth, for for this wonderful on this wonderful platform. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. That was uh, absolutely brilliant and such a comprehensive picture of the entire issues which are connected with the uh, with 5G. You talked about, you know the transformational impact you talked about you know how it is going to affect different kind of verticals you talked about uh, you know uh, the technology that is required the governance framework which is required i think it was uh, it was absolutely you know a very comprehensive roundup of uh, the entire thing uh, and in that you have also raised uh, certain very pertinent issues uh, and therefore, let me uh, take up these issues with the other uh, panelists who are there. Uh, and I would request that, you know, let's make it into very, uh, uh, very dialogue oriented uh, uh, interaction, you know, with one to three minutes kind of res responses to each and every question that I ask you. Uh, so let me start with you, Mr. Akhil Gupta. Uh, you know, the big elephant in the room is the spectrum right? Uh, Dr. Sharma alluded to the spectrum and so on. Now, what are the industry's expectations and do you think they are being met? 
<clears throat> so I think um, Priji, thanks for this webinar and uh, Dr. Sharma for a wonderful address. First of all, let me congratulate you. I didn't realize this is the 10th anniversary for Aadhaar. In my opinion, if one was to rank some of the biggest transformation this country has seen in, say, the last 25 years, Aadhaar ranks absolutely among the topmost. The other two one can think of can be IT revolution and telecom revolution. But congratulations, I think this is one feather in your cap which will always shine, sir. So congratulations once again. I think uh, before I come to the spectrum, one point which Mr. Sharma raised is about the use cases. And very often we have heard he is absolutely right. Industry in particular has always been saying there are no, no use cases. Now, to my mind, COVID has actually given us a huge use case for 5G. Because when we work remotely, whether from home or a remote location, what you need is a broadband. Even our um, digital communication policy talks about certain targets for penetration of internet broadband. I believe it's 50% by some year and then 80% or something. That's not possible with wireline. It can only be wireless. And I think 5G provides us that opportunity where without having to have a ubiquitous coverage on day one, wherever there is a need, internet broadband, we can provide it with 5G. So it's a very huge use case, which is right in front of us. I think the big impediment there is spectrum. Because naturally, the current recommended price is considered as too high. And I really want to point out only one thing when it comes to spectrum. The stated policy of the state by way of NDCP is that revenue maximization is not the aim of the government of India. The aim is internet penetration and broadband penetration. If that is the case, my only request has been, let's walk that talk. And therefore, let us invest more money in the network. And so the spectrum should be, you know, at a very, very nominal cost. And therefore, instead of my recommendation, instead of very high, reserve price, why not start with a small reserve price? If there is a massive demand, in any case, it will go up. If not, please provide the spectrum at a very reasonable price. Restrict the trading so that nobody uh, you know, makes extra money out of it. Put very stringent rollout conditions so that you ensure that the proliferation of 5G is going across the cities and towns and rural areas. Set up reasonable rollout uh, obligations, and if somebody doesn't meet them, put very severe penalties. So I think on spectrum, this is about time that we really fulfill what is already given in the NDCP. There's nothing new. There's nothing. Revenue maximization is not the aim. Let us really follow that path and introduce 5G as soon as possible. Right now, the only impediment I can tell you for early introduction of 5G is the capital layout which this industry is not in a position to do. If that burden goes off the spectrum, I am sure there will be money found for the network uh, deployment. Thank you, Vijay. Uh, thank you very much. I am sure, Dr. Sharma, you must be uh, you know eager to answer this question, but we'll have some more questions for you so that you can answer them at one time. Uh, I, I come to you, uh, Dr. Agarwal. Uh, you know, a couple of years back, uh, uh, you know, there was another uh, roundtable that we had done in which we had talked about uh, telecom infrastructure as a utility, right? Uh, fiber as a utility, that is what we had discussed. Now, if, you know, we are talking about use cases which are fundamental and which are going to, to change things, 5G would mean a rollout of a infrastructure at a very, very, uh, you know, different kind of a level than than the existing infrastructure, because the moment you, uh, you know, go in for speed and access, uh, then you require, uh, you know, much more uh, infrastructure to be rolled out, right? Uh, what, are, what are your views on making this entire thing uh, around 5G as a, 
uh, as a utility. <clears throat> Yeah, thanks, thanks, PG, for inviting me, and uh, Dr. Sharma for I fully agree with you. A very, very comprehensive talk, which addressed the entire uh, uh, the entire uh, scope of the industry from various dimensions. Uh, uh, I would uh, I want to address PG your question from uh, two two aspects. So there is uh, two parts of 5G. One part is uh, the application end, and the other end is the infrastructure. And uh, and I fully agree with Dr. Sharma when he said that the 5G's technology, which uh, is going to cause quantum jump uh, in terms of enabling new applications, uh, which are all going to be focused on extremely high efficiency. So whether it is industrial applications, real-time educational healthcare applications, as well as multiple uh, peer-to-peer high bandwidth, as well as low latency applications like gaming, uh, etc., and the machine-to-machine -machine applications. And these applications would be uh, largely deployed in enterprises, both uh, private as well as public. So on the application front, uh, so whether it is the application developer, whether it is the platform provider, and this uh, great idea of, of Dr. Sharma about uh, moving from platform to protocol, uh, the hosting, the application development, the customer facing front-ending engine, all that has to be extremely, extremely entrepreneurial and innovative. So that aspect must be led by uh, different uh, enterprises, uh, small and large, in terms of uh, developing and providing that service. On the infrastructure end, on the other hand, uh, uh, which is where you require very high bandwidth, you would require edge storage, you require edge computation, which that requires uh, very deep fiberization, uh, that requires uh, uh, edge compute, which requires a lot of small cells almost in a model similar to say electricity distribution that uh, 5G small cells would actually literally be deployed over a lot of street light hardware also. So this infrastructure built for 5G uh, or, or any other digital requirement should be thought of in a very similar manner like a core infrastructure, like roads, power, et cetera. And this infrastructure uh, must be built once and the thought process there has to be in, an, in a in a core infrastructure thought process and then shared for multiple applications by the various uh, service provider. So I, I'm thinking of a utilitarian uh, thing, not from a utility perspective, but from infrastructure created once and to be shared uh, by multiple uh, stakeholders. And that can be created by private enterprise or public private enterprise. That's uh, uh, the second aspect. But uh, this, this has to be created once. And uh, the role of service provisioning, application development, and infrastructure ownership needs to be supported. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Agarwal. Uh, Professor Karandikar, uh, you know, in terms of the infrastructure, the rural areas will require a completely different level of infrastructure. What are going to be the challenges there? I uh, would request you to address uh, those challenges. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me to this. And uh, and I think uh, answers to some of these questions were touched in a very comprehensive talk uh, by Dr. Sharma already. Uh, and uh, so there are three challenges, and I think uh, he already touched that one challenge in providing the 5G connectivity in the rural areas is uh, unavailability of the ubiquitous backhaul. That is, you know, the non-availability of the fiber backhaul uh, everywhere. And of course, you know, as you know, that the government of India launched a very ambitious project of Bharat Net of connecting the fiber to all the gram panchayats. Uh, but I would say that uh, that has still not reached the penetration which is required for uh, uh, the kind of infrastructure which what Dr. Anand Agrawal was uh, talking. And uh, to this extent, uh, I think that this is one thing. The other issue, of course, there are uh, you know solutions to this. Like you know, this can be addressed by wireless backhaul. Maybe like the E-band uh, uh, can be deployed uh, for backhauling uh, uh, you know the 5G base stations uh, in the rural areas. And this is sort of one area uh, where you know, as Dr. Sharma also said, that Tri has already made recommendations on the uh, E-band, and you know that could be. Uh, that could be sort of used. The second thing, the second problem in the 5G is uh, 
you know in the rural areas uh, uh, and i think this point was also made earlier that we need really fixed wireless access we need low mobility we really don't need you know high speed mobility in fact when the 5g specifications were drafted in the enhanced mobile broadband uh, in the urban and rural use cases the imt 2020 was talking of the mobility of 500 kilometers per hour and clearly i think uh, you know we really need uh, you know high throughput when you are uh, either moving at 40 kilometers per hour in the cities or uh, you know you are uh, sitting fixed so this was also one of the use cases and and as you know that india did put forward this as one of the use cases in imt 2020 in the form of a low mobility large cell scenario uh, which has been now adopted in imt 2020 because in the rural areas we really need large coverages also you know because uh, there are like clustered settlements clustered populations and so on so i feel that these are the two main uh, challenges that needs to be done we need to use the Uh, as much as the wireless backhaul while you know the fiberization and fiber penetration still happens in the rural areas uh, and the second is like you know use you know large coverage cells so for example in the sub 1 gigahertz uh, spectrum you know in 600 megahertz or things can be deployed to cover a large so 5g actually fortunately works across all spectrum bands you know it works under sub gigahertz it works from 1 to 6 gigahertz it works in millimeter wave and then you know there are different of course deployment scenarios where you know uh, much of these spectrums can be deployed in the rural areas in the dense urban areas and so on so i think uh, those are the two things uh, that i would say uh, you know can be used uh, coming to you mr uh, kamalnath uh you know uh, yes there has been a lot of investment that has come in the last uh, few months in the telecom sector uh, but you know some of the the criticism of that also is that you know perhaps we are selling to foreigners and then we will be leasing back because you know the industry which is going to benefit out of uh, 5g and so on uh, you know will be then uh, uh, you know paying on a regular basis which will be going abroad now you know you work with a whole lot of corporates so what what are the kind of use cases that you are seeing coming from industry for 5g yeah very interesting question pradeep in fact uh, dr sharma and all of the panel members you know they touched upon these you know uh, various kind of use cases now i mean use cases for 5g as all of us understand will will cut across from people like you and me to businesses and even you know and and getting expanded to government and public services so predominantly if we understand the power of 5g which is faster speed low latency and large data transfers increased connectivity you know more people will be able to communicate at the same time without overloading the network uh, the mobility part of for example the 5g base stations can can take signals you know even for trains running at say 300 plus my uh, power hour and you have many devices per square kilometer so as uh, one of the panel members was pointing out you know it 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 will all these things in combination will will trigger massive machine type communications you know which is machine to machine communication uh, along with the you know the ultra reliability low latency communication abilities which 5g has now what does it translate to so i expect you know uh, and this is a hidden you know hidden requirement in you know within within almost all the sectors for example when we uh, we are all, as you know apart from being a data center and cloud provider uh, uh, our, our company uh, we also are into the network space uh, today you know many manu large manufacturing organizations when they have to connect the sensors you know uh, from where they need data uh, they need to analyze the data they need to understand the performance of the uh, of their equipments on devices that was a fact so be it factories be it you know uh, uh, the 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 uh, automobile industry be it uh, the utilities for example the smart metering uh, deployment is going on in india and uh, uh, you know reliable connectivity is definitely an issue uh, there is a very huge uh, use case in the healthcare segment as dr shama was, was was pointing out even if uh, you know the hospitals or the healthcare providers you know they have they even if they have money they can they can you know uh, uh, they, they can install uh, 
cutting edge uh, healthcare equipments, but uh, we don't have so many doctors, right? So the remote, uh, the, you know, treatment of patients, even, even 5G, we are hearing that it can also help, you know, uh, more monitoring of you know, operations. So I don't think there will be any sector which will be left out, you know, uh, uh, kind of, you know, unimpacted. And what I mean unimpacted is impacted, impacted positively, uh, uh, you know, for that matter. So even, you know, we look at the smart cities, you know, uh, we, uh, Smart city, the lot of projects are getting rolled out, but definitely even there, uh, the the implementers, the, the, the organizations or the companies who are implementing, they are facing a lot of connectivity challenges. And even they are connected, they are not getting the right speed, right? On the uh, because you know, if, if you if you have say you know uh, uh, traffic lights or so many uh, so many public facing equipments which are uh, which are installed in a city, if you really want to make it a smart city, we need something like. We need something like 5G, and uh, uh, of course, you know, even even 5G is expected to reach our home. You know, uh, creating a smart home ecosystem, uh, and of course, the vehicle tracking, the vehicle transport management. So, Pradeep, I think you know there is there will be hardly any sector, and I can assure you because we deal with a lot of there, there will be hardly any sector which will be you know untouched by untouched by 5G as and when uh, they deployed. In fact, I can tell you the industry is looking forward for that, you know, the business, all the vertical industry. Uh, Dr. Sharma, you heard, uh, uh, you know, the various views. Uh, and I have, uh, if, you know, uh, Mr. Akhil Gupta very clearly uh, talked about that can we make available the, the spectrum at a very, very uh, sort of a low price. Uh, you know, because it is transformational in nature. Uh, similarly, Dr. Agarwal also talked about the fact that you require to create a huge uh, infrastructure, which is there. Uh, Professor Garandikar talked about speeding up the the entire Bharatnet and so on. Uh, Mr. Kamal Nath talked about how critical it is as far as the, the industry is concerned. Uh, my question to you, therefore, is, that you know, just as there was a time when we had this uh, slogan "roti kapdi kapda makan" and or bandwidth, do we need a new slogan which is "bijli pani sadak" and 5G? Well, uh, I am not really very sure because I am not a politician. You know, slogans are for politicians, and they are the ones who actually. And uh, slogans are extremely important because they mobilize public opinion. They actually articulate the things in a very very you know uh, single sentence or half a sentence so so i'm not undermining their importance but but i'm not the guy who actually invents slogans or who believes in slogans or who thinks that slogans will solve the problem uh, you are right no, sir, my uh, question to you is that should it be given the same sort of an ex uh, importance as is given to basically uh, money inside i think i think this is i think uh, I have had the privilege of interacting with Honorable Prime Minister uh, in, a, in a, a few days back. And uh, my appeal to him was that, sir, kindly realize, you know, ICT was important, information and communication was important, but I think nobody would have realized that it is that important, especially after seeing the pandemic. You know, in this period, we have realized that how critical and important and central this whole uh, infrastructure is and how valuable it is for us to have this as a country because this is a vertical this is not a vertical anymore this is a platform on which everything else will be riding and therefore for a sustained growth for our country we need to have a very very robust platforms of platform of connectivity if you know digital india programs first thing first line of digital india program is Connectivity as a utility to every citizen of this country. Ubiquitous connectivity as a utility to every citizen. That's the first line of Digital India. If you just go to, go to the document, the document which we prepared, and I also had some part to play in that, it is because we realize that you may create all kinds of software and services and all games and everything. If there's no underlying connectivity, everything is useless. So therefore, I think this is the central uh, stuff which needs to be done. I completely agree with Akhil Gupta ji that you know we need to we need to provide all the incentives. 
unfortunately we have always deferred on the issue as to what is the reasonable reserve price of the spectrum and you know what is non reasonable honestly i have gone through all the history of of these reserve prices since the time the spectrum has started getting auctioned and uh, at no point in time i have found that the industry has has, has said that it is a very reasonable wonderful price trai has prescribed there has already been always been an uproar saying that trai is absolutely anti development it doesn't provide the you know it's a very heavy price so i mean i draw comfort not from the fact that it is uh, you know I, otherwise i would have died of guilt you know that i if i am the only person who is doing these kinds of things and earlier, earlier people were all very reasonable i would have said look main to bada bada hi ganda kaam maine kar diya is desh ke liye to aisa nahi hai so isliye ye thoda sa comfort hai mujhe but at the same time i i agree you know what the best thing will would have been jaise for example 700 megahertz was put for it you know auction and and there were no takers for it now obviously if there were no takers for it it can be interpreted in multiple ways there were no takers for it because the reserve price was very high there was no takers for it because there was no need really for that kind of a spectrum at that price and there were multiple reasons so what i'm saying is that ultimately what is required is probably i mean I, I don't need to emphasize the point that the government has all the powers in the world to basically change the reserve prices, and it has it has happened in the past. It has happened in the past that the government has actually reduced the reserve prices suggested by TRI. So it is not yeah. the first time. One part is that we are only recommenders. We have only recommended. Yes, I am saying that we are the right path. We are the right path. The work of the government is the right path. And Professor Karandikar, who I am also. पाले में लेता हूं बिकॉज़ ही इज आल्सो अ मेंबर ऑफ द टीआरआई ही इज आल्सो इक्वली टू प्लेन प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड यू नो ही हैज आल्सो वन वोट एंड आई आल्सो हैव वन वोट इन द अथॉरिटी सो सो ही इज ही इज नो लेस इंपॉर्टेंट देन देन मी इन दैट सिस्टम सो ही इज आल्सो इक्वली टू बी प्लेड बट व्हाट आई एम सेइंग इज दैट आई एम ओनली राइट आफ्टर माय प्रोफेशन ये तो हम लोग जो है ना व्हाई वी एग्री बट एक बात है ना कि भाई अब अब मतलब the whole thing can be the proof of the putting is in the heating action auction ho thoda sa auction ho ke pata lage kya hai kya viable hai kya nahi hai kya dikhta hai kya nahi dikhta hai mujhe to lagta hai ki hame as a as a matter of this thing mujhe lagta hai ki auction jo hai ek annual affair type ho jana chahiye because ek regular tarike se hum logon ko 5 saal ka hamara kya program hai wo bhi hame batana chahiye so i think there are lot of things which need to be done Uh, but but i would i certainly would agree with mr gupta and with uh, dr anand agrawal mr kamalnath professor karendikar all of you that you know we need to put in place policies a slew of policies which will ensure that we are ahead on the curve on the 5g i think it's very necessary uh, we cannot afford to be left out in this this game uh, and, and and i think unless we create that kind of ecosystem fortunately what is also happening is that now uh, of the international situation being what it is even the manufacturing of the you know equipments etc can be accelerated like we have done it in the mobile handset so we should we should do that so i think it's a great opportunity for our country really some of these and of course with uh, professor abhay uh, karandikar being there he is a standards man actually he has all the you know patas of tgpp and you know those other things so i think we can we can we can all combine together the industry the academy and the other people to to really uh, generate uh, domestic uh, manufacturing domestic technology and and domestic uh, you know intellectual properties sure so before i just take this issue of uh, standards uh, dr agarwal i have one question do you think therefore there should be a new ppp model that uh, should emerge in telecom i think uh, uh, it will it will it is something that is uh, uh, will naturally develop as i said that uh, this uh, 5g infrastructure would require large swaths of spectrum and it is really heartening to uh, hear what uh, dr sharma said uh, uh, multiple small cell sites uh, and spectrum which will be owned both by digital service providers as well as uh, the 25 megahertz that uh, dr sharma talked about for private enterprises uh, so uh, 
the, the core infrastructure can be built by any infra provider. And we are seeing uh, multiple models globally, wherein uh, the separation of infrastructure uh, ownership and service provisioning is clearly happening. Infrastructure is owned and funded by infra funds, including PE funds uh, for commercially attractive areas. And uh, uh, what uh, Akhil has done amazingly with both Infratel and Indus Towers are great examples of that in India. With, uh, and with active sharing happening for uh, IP1 providers, this, this model is already proven. For other parts of the country, though, the, the uh, parts that uh, Bear was talking about, for example, rural connectivity, some kind of VGF based funding or a hybrid EPC model, like what is tried out uh, in the highway sector, can, can be done. So I think models are available. At one level, we have to truly recognize that the overall spending in the in the uh, in the sector has to significantly increase the uh, one part uh, that uh, we are focusing on and uh, bringing attention of the government uh, again and again for a uh, economy of india size uh, uh, we must spend 1% of gdp on the digital infrastructure we are currently spending 0.25 to 1 and we believe this would be done by public private uh, pe sort of a thought process but making sure that uh, at least one percent is spent and government taking a big part of that uh, spending along with what they're doing on the policy side is, is also something that is required so four times the expenditure is what you recommend as compared to what it is being done right now uh, professor karateka uh, you know dr sharma talked about standards uh, and there was a time when you know standards were evolving in 5g and you know, there was discussion that India can actually take a lead and can actually be setting up the standards. Uh, is that dream gone? Uh, now we will just uh, follow the standards which are set by perhaps the Chinese and the Americans and so on, or the Europeans and so on? No, 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 not at all. I'm sorry, before Professor uh, responds, um, Dr. Sharma, my apologies. I will have to get on the call. Unfortunately, I thought this program would be at four. My, my real apologies. Catch up with you. Thank you. No, no, I, I could hear you, Akhil um, Mukherjee. No, sir, I was apologizing that I'll have to be getting off the call. I got another call waiting. So I was just apologizing for, you know. Thank you, sir. Uh, Akhil, can I there, therefore ask you a question right now? Okay, uh, you sure. know, we, we discussed about this. So, what do you think? I, I'm sorry, we have uh, uh, I'm so you sorry. Know, over time, but I'm saying that can there be a what sort of regulatory framework you think should be there? What kind of PPP model that we should be looking at in terms of deployment of IT? Well, I genuinely believe we have a very, very robust regulatory framework already. And therefore, tinkering what is uselessly will only complicate. I think it's a perfectly good regulatory framework. Perhaps the only thing which we should just think of in terms of regulation is, I have always discussed it and spoken to Dr. Sharma also. Maybe time has come when we have a net co, where People can put up an infrastructure, which is active infrastructure, radiating infrastructure, which can be shared by various operators. And I think some little improvisation in regulation would be needed. But if um, I, I don't think we need a very major overall of the regulatory system. It's working very well. I think it's very robust and very smooth. So, so uh, 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 sorry for that question. So, I think it would be good if if you could complete that. Uh, about yeah, yeah. Technology being made into. I just wanted to hear because that's very important. Uh, from right, right. So, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, that is not uh, really true. Uh, as I already mentioned, that India made this contribution of uh, LMLC, low mobility, large cell, which was incorporated as the use case scenario of uh, uh, of IMT 2020. Uh, now, I, I just want to tell you that in IMT 2020, 3GPP has submitted a uh, radio interface uh, uh, technology. And uh, TSDSI also submitted our own radio interface technology, which is built on 3GPP, 
but uh, to cater to the lmlc that is low mobility large cell uh, we have uh, suggested uh, some changes uh, in the uh, in the physical layer and uh, i think uh, that has been uh, that has been uh, submitted to the imt 2020 in itu so this is one of the three radio interface technologies which have been submitted one was submitted uh, by uh, europe another one by the 3gpp and the third has been submitted uh, by the tsdsi so i would not say that uh, you know we have not been now contributing to the standards in fact in ieee standards also for example uh, our own research group is leading uh, one important ieee standards on uh, p1930 which is on software defined networking uh, so i would say that now contributions to the 3gpp igu uh, the ieee have started coming in uh, but of course this is not at that scale Uh, which is uh, really needed i mean uh, uh, we still need large participations uh, from indian uh, uh, industry uh, indian r&d labs and indian academia to go to the uh, standards body and include uh, our own intellectual property rights iprs and indian requirements into the standards but uh, um, i think dr sharma made a point of indian uh, manufacturing and domestic uh, product development i think one good part that has happened now uh, 5g and beyond is that we are having now increasing softwareization of the networks and as a result what is happening is that because of software defined networking network function virtualizations etc most of the uh, components are being built on off the shelf hardware and the lot of intelligence lot of iprs is there in the software and therefore there is a great opportunity for us to uh, you know uh, really leapfrog and develop the technology uh, you know earlier we don't really need you know special purpose uh, asics uh, or uh, you know hardware for that which uh, need to depend upon others in fact except the radio part the rf hardware the entire intelligence of the base band uh, on the base station and the entire intelligence from the core side uh, can be actually in the uh, software and can be there on the uh, commodity of the shelf hardware so from this point of view like uh, there is a now a big opportunity for us to take our iprs and requirements into the standards and develop the product based on this this cycle has been now considerably shortened uh, than what was you know maybe in the 3g 4g era all right so, so yeah some uh, play in standards but a whole lot in terms of the ip that will develop over those uh, standards uh you know i think that is where the opportunity for india would be uh mr nath uh you know in terms of uh, security uh, what are the the concerns uh, you know both in terms of uh, uh, you know business deployment in terms of citizen deployment and so on so is this question for me yeah okay so uh, you see i think in 5g uh, i mean 5g is a double edged sword if we really look at from a security perspective uh, as on one hand it is expected to be more secure than 3g or 4g because of better encryption technologies which are expected to be there now uh, and it's also a fact that each evolution in technology is more secure than its predecessor uh, and that really doesn't change with 5g over 5g poses an elevated security threat uh, specifically because there are more vectors to which uh, the hackers can attack and as professor was mentioning just now 5g will enable a lot of wider usage of uh, you know cloud and virtualization technologies like you know software defined network and uh, network functions virtualization which is called nfp uh, both of them are highly flexible and programmable in nature meaning that they are more vulnerable to security threats like like our computers or like cloud or data center for instance an sdn network element such as the management interface uh, could be used to gain access to the sdn controller and bring down the entire system as a result now just imagine the impact of that you know when you are in a connect, you are have connected uh, you know uh, connected factories uh, uh, smart grids uh, connected healthcare uh, what kind of catastrophe it can bring so uh, so on one hand it has all the benefits on the other hand there are security concerns 
Now, I believe that, you know, uh, like in cloud, for example, I, will, I would also like to uh, set the example of cloud. Uh, initially, when cloud was getting popular, you know, in the initial days of cloud, uh, all our customers, almost all our customers who are predominantly on-premise, they had a lot of security concerns of the cloud, simply because of the because of the fact that all the stakeholders in the cloud in the cloud ecosystem, they did not understand their their respective responsibility. For example, uh, uh, the security of the cloud, and for example, if we are a cloud service provider, the security of the cloud is our responsibility. Uh, security in the cloud is the customer's responsibility. And when the you know data moves in and out of cloud, it is the responsibility of the network service provider and also the enterprise. So if I draw a similar inference to this, I think even 5G world is going to be a shared responsibility model, right? So uh, we we have heard about the standards. Uh, Professor talks about that. Uh, uh, spoke about the standards. The standard bodies need to dictate uh, how to implement a secure 5G network architecture. Uh, we have the physical infrastructure providers like Nokia, Ericsson, and I'm sure there will be many more uh, who would build embedded security features within the system with more encryption. Uh, and one of the one of the major stakeholders, you know, in this whole game are the operators, network operators, who are responsible for the security of the network. Uh, they must embrace a continuous risk-based approach to monitor the networks and services because you know you never know the hackers at times are smarter than us. So. So they need to be completely, you know, uh, uh, cognizant of this fact and run security as a operations, you know, in their own network. And of course, at the end of the day, the beneficiaries, the ultimate beneficiary, which are the enterprises like us, you know, we, we should be responsible uh, for what kind of data we allow, you know, to be transferred uh, to be transported across network. We are also seeing the emerging emerging of edge data centers. So earlier days, you should spoke about uh, speak about data centers. Uh, sorry, uh, Kamal, can I just uh, interrupt? I think we are, you know, running out of time. I just would request uh, the panelists. Do we have another 10 minutes? Uh, can we just extend this by, I know we have, we have overshot our time, but if it is okay with you, can we just extend it by another 10 minutes, please? I have another meeting actually in about, uh, you know, in about five minutes. So, uh, if you can excuse me, then you know. So I will. I will do a, a quick sort of you know. Sure. So over the next uh, five minutes, I'll I'll just ask you one set of questions and would request if 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 I can have a, a crisp one minute uh, sort of a reply to that, uh, Professor Karandikar. Uh, you know, uh, today there is a geopolitical challenge as far as China is concerned. Do you think we can leapfrog over China in terms of five G? So uh, I would say that I already made this point uh, that, you know, since, uh, uh, you know, 5G network, uh, there is an increasing softwareization and uh, since a lot of components, uh, you know, can be developed uh, in the form of uh, software on commodity hardware, only maybe, you know, specialized ASICs are there mostly in the RF part. Uh, there is an opportunity for us really to leapfrog. Uh, I mean, this there lies an opportunity here, and uh, there are companies, uh, you know, in fact, uh, 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 which there are, you know, we have like, strong Indian companies uh, with a lot of software and uh, hardware expertise. In fact, Starlight is one. Uh, I'm this sitting here, and I think uh, there is actually a lot of opportunity to really uh, develop indigenous uh, product. And uh, we should really seize this opportunity. As you know, that India is the, uh, you know, is the largest, uh, one of the largest markets after China. In fact, uh, uh, most of the European vendors and all, if they are going to make money in this financial year, they will make money, you know, probably from the uh, India only. So therefore, there is a big opportunity. And uh, I think the Indian industry and the Indian companies should really seize this opportunity to uh, develop the indigenous product. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Nath, you were talking about uh, uh, security and connected to that is also the issue of privacy. Uh, how does one go about building trust? Mr. Nath, this question is for you. Mr. Kamal Nath. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just, you know, I, I thought, you know, 
So, so Pradeep, I was you know, saying you uh, talked about think... security. What about privacy and trust, and what needs to be done in terms of building yeah. trust? Correct. Yeah, correct. So, so uh, I think you know, answer, uh, in terms of yeah. Yeah, yeah. In terms of building trust, uh, I think all the all the bodies, you know, which I mentioned in my previous narrative, you know, they need to come together and and create an environment where uh, where there will be, you know, uh, an over overarching architecture, you know, of of collaborating each other should uh, should get created. Then only this problem can be this this concerns can be addressed. Is because it is when there's a collective when there is individual responsibility, unless collectively they come together uh, the concerns will remain uh, as we have seen in uh, as we have seen in cloud thanks uh, dr agarwal 5 trillion uh, goal uh, we may of course uh, end up shifting it by a few years because of uh, uh, the the impact of 2020 but actually can 5g accelerate that and we can still uh, hope to achieve the uh, that goal Definitely, I think uh, we to achieve that goal, we have to look at it both from the demand perspective and the supply perspective. So on the demand perspective, uh, whether we look at industrial applications, agricultural applications, there are multiple use cases for 5G to improve efficiency across the entire value chain. And uh, Dr. Sharma talking about this 25 megahertz being opened up for industrial applications like what is it in Germany, I think it will create, unleash a lot of innovation on, and entrepreneurial spirit across the value chain on the demand front. On the supply front, what Dr. Sharma said and Professor uh, Karandikar said, this is uh, uh, talking about leapfrogging. Uh, on the supply front, 5G is very, very conducive for open source and disaggregated hardware and software. Uh, they spoke about the fact that other than radio unit, which is uh, with specialized ASIC, and it's all software and then uh, generic hardware. India can really take full advantage of the overall supply uh, ecosystem for 5G end to end from radio units to the overall orchestration software. And at the same time with uh, Wi-Fi 6, as well as local spectrum releases, there is a great potential for creating localized networks for industrial applications, healthcare applications, and these networks can be created by local entrepreneurs. And multiple use cases, multiple uh, network creators, and multiple spectrum users, plus the hardware and software ecosystem. I, I see this as a major inflection point for India to take this uh, the right necessary decisions. And uh, uh, this all value creation and value addition can be done. So I see 5G, 5 trillion, and Aknirbhar India on the supply side. All, all very, very correlated. And as uh, uh, we, uh, we at STL are really looking at this towards playing our role in, in that. In that. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Agarwal. Uh, uh, Dr. Sharma, uh, usually, you know, people ask, what are the three things that the government should do? Uh, I'm going to reverse that. I'm going to ask you this question. What do you think are the three things that the industry should do? Well, industry, I mean, I'm not really the expert in the industry, but I'll say, uh, I'll say two things. One is not three, really. One is that I completely agree with uh, Professor Abhay Karandikar and also Dr. Anand Agrawal that you see, in computers, look at the computer example. In the computers, the commoditization came, and that actually transformed the entire thing, right? Till the computers were proprietary, saying that this machine does this, this machine does this, and you know, all all the special purpose computers. Till then, things were not scaling up. Till then, things were not expanding. Till then, things were not exploding. Now, once this whole thing came of a commoditization, and which means that soft hardware became a standard hardware and on top of it you can you know use programs to do whatever multiple things you want computers to do then the whole thing exploded in fact it will be interesting to know that the entire aadhaar backend is done on a complete commodity hardware on a complete open source base nothing i mean there is nothing which is uh, proprietary uh, or, or a special purpose hardware and there is nothing no technology which is a proprietary except the deduplication, biometric deduplication, because we don't have, have an open source scale level, uh, you know, sort of uh, component for uh, component or software for that in, local, in open world. So one is I agree that this whole, we can really leapfrog and we have leapfrog in a number of areas, provided we 
we see this opportunity saying that no look all these specialized hardwares may not be really required that much a commodity hardware will do and commodity hardware are equally you know it's easier to create ecosystem for limited number of components rather than creating an ecosystem for thousands of components so i think that's something which i help second thing is industry must realize that and that's my thought maybe i i, I have no right to pontificate and, and to know guide the industry but i just feel this up to now there is a vertical play uh, happening in the industry where the same airtel is providing uh, individual customers are the clients and they are providing the entire network you know from the uh, msc to bsc to towers to everything they own and operate now it's okay and even now it has been proved that sharing a part of that infrastructure is a better idea sharing towers is a good idea maybe sharing fiber at the back end is a good idea so so this kind of unbundling in some sense has taken place already but in a 5g world this is going to be a norm and industry must realize that they should they cannot remain a vertical players you know supplying the all these sensors to the farmer in a field and you know doing collecting the data and doing these things so what will happen is that this whole application provisioning will be divided among various players and that is the best way to do it there could be some guys who specialized in the you know art, uh, uh, ai relating to ai and networks relating to sensor network related to agriculture somebody is doing something else somebody is doing for smart cities so i think this entire service provisioning architecture must change and the sooner we realize it the better it is because otherwise everybody making uh, last mile provisioning of service will not be feasible will not be scalable will not really work out so that's and, and that is why the idea of you know netco which akhil gupta ji uh, pointed out uh, you know unbundling of various layers that is the best way for for these systems to, to work and and that is what people should realize that 5g world is quite different from the other worlds where you could you could do everything yourself you will need and, and you know this is a good way also because there will be innovations on the edge there will be innovations and in the field there will be innovations every around in all around service provisioning area so this is this is this is good for innovation also so that is something which i would say that rather than looking at it as a monolith we should we should start also you know this once you have this this uh, infrastructure players you have the networks you have the application providers you have the service providers i think this is this is an ecosystem which will actually proliferate and and, and work for most efficient so this is where i would like to thank you well, that, that's absolutely excellent i think you know the, the fact that there should be openness in terms of the technology the open standards and so on <laughs> as well as sharing in terms of the the industry layer uh, you know of different kind of things which are there so that so that as far as the user is concerned they they get the best as far as 5g is concerned and that definitely will have the power to to transform uh, india's economy it will have the transfer to the power to transform uh, india uh, thank you very much uh, uh, all of you the panelists and over to you uh, shubhendu for a uh, for a formal vote of thanks thank you pg and a big thank you to the speakers all the speakers dr arish sharma Mr. Gupta, Professor Karandikar, Dr. Agarwal, and Mr. Kamal Nath. On behalf of Cyber Media and Voice and Data, I also thank all the participants who joined us today. I'm happy to inform you all that today's webinar will be available on the video on demand format on the Cyber Media YouTube channel for all of you to watch it again and share. And uh, with this, we'd like to now call it a day. But before that, may I request all participants to share their feedbacks to the form that will soon be visible on the screen. And thank you all, everybody, signing off now till the second part of the series on 22nd September. Thank you. Thank you I'd invite you all to join. Stay at home, stay safe, and keep reading voice and data. Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Abhay. Thank you, Dr. Thank Amar you. Thank you, Dr. Yeah.